What's up Trin Vegas Vibe peeps? Welcome to another episode of Trin Vegas Vibes. In this one, we are checking out the Carnival Museum of Trin and Tobago right here. Ooh, we are seeing here, yeah, car passing. Right here in the corner of Duke and Charlotte Street. Yeah. So let's do this. Right now, we're just waiting for them to open on this Sunday. So the corner of Duke and Charlotte, next to KFC is the museum. Right? Charlotte Street is a one-way street, so you, all you'll see cars coming down. So you'll have to pass somewhere high up and then come down here. And of course, like I said, the screen gate, this would be the parking. Well, there's a public car park available. I'm not sure if it's eight dollars hour. I'm not sure if it's part of the museum, but at least you have like eight dollars per hour here. I'll find out if this parking is part of the museum. So you'll see the sign. If you, you know, coming down Charlotte Street, you'll see this sign right there. All right. Now the museum is open from Wednesdays to Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. The admission is 60 TT or 10 US for adults, while kids 12 and under is 20 TT or 3 US. So very reasonable. All right, let's head inside. Now this was formerly the Penny Bank, built in 1914, and that's why there's a bank sign at the top of the entrance. More on that later on. There's always an exhibit or theme, and this year it's the story of Calypso, featuring the woman in Calypso. Now when you enter, you'll see these paintings of various Calypsonians throughout our history. And this is where you pay the entrance fee. Baron is still going strong. That's the mighty composer, brother resistant, Pink Panther, the mighty Choke Dust, and Gypsy, to name a few. Now, let me give you an overview of the exhibit on the first floor. And these are the flyers they used to advertise back in the days, you know, before the internet. Look at these prices, five to two dollars. Yeah, which would be a decent amount at the time, I guess. Now, check out some of the albums slash records of these musicians of yesteryears. All right, let's check out our woman in Calypso. Shout out to the late Denise Plummer. You all know her tune, Na Leaving, is one of my favorites. And by extension, one of the unofficial team songs of the channel. Shout out Samantha Elliott for this cover being played by this gramophone. Oh, probably from this recorder. Let me know in the comments below if you know what this is. All right, let's make the rounds, starting with Terry Lyons, who sang I Am Lion. Now, honestly, I did not know we had so much female artists so it's a joy to discover and read their history, which is a fantastic way to educate peeps like myself on those who laid the foundation for the current generation. Let me know in the comments below if you know any of these women in Calypso and what songs you enjoyed from them. Also, I'll leave a link to their songs in the description below as well. Uh, well, at least the ones I could find on YouTube. Yeah, and pick up this parang queen, Marcia Miranda. Now let me give you all a history on the space that is the home for the museum. Now the Penny Bank or the Trinidad Corporation Bank allows citizens to open an account with just a penny, one cent, back in the days, which was kind of evolutionary at the time. Now big up Denise Belfon, Destra and the undisputed Soka Mona Queen Fian Lions and of course our Chutney Queen Jupiter. Now, the penny bank allow peeps to save and grow an account regardless of their class or social status. So it's fitting that this museum has found its home at this historical heritage site. Yeah, the architecture on the outside is over 100 years old. You know, at the first floor that is. While the inside is updated to host the museum whose purpose is to preserve the history of our carnival and also the evolution of it right here in TNT and the world. And currently, the museum is highlighting the woman in Calypso and Soka from the past to the present. And in a few minutes, we'll be moving on to the second floor where a tour awaits my Trimbago Vibe peeps. So yeah, so do stick around. Now this visit will take about one to two hours and it's worth checking out whenever you can. And just giving you that up front right now, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's probably head up to the second floor now. 
right so on the first floor we saw women in calypso the second floor is the history of the steel pan and we actually get another tour here by mr christopher neil christopher neil yes christopher yes i'm so taking you all through the story of steel pan through this exhibition all right so take it away right. you want to start so before steel pan and, and all that we have african drums right yeah so uh, during emancipation um, african drums being used by the slaves back then and eventually was banned uh, by the masters at the time because uh, the master didn't like the slaves using the drums for you know conversation or then in the frustration and so on right so one of the known african drums we have in Trinidad is the djembe right the, here the what the djembe djembe okay djembe. Right, so this is this is a popular one. Yeah. And you can get different tones depending on where you hit it. So you have a bass tone and you have a slap tone. Oh. Right? And that's how you get different tones. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you can see that was banned during the uh, the nineteenth century there. And after that they wanted to find something else to beat on, something to play on. So they turned to bamboo. Yeah. Right? This is where we get tambo bamboo. So Ooh, yeah. Tambo bamboo, there are four different types, right? So you have the longest one, we call this the bass. Okay. Right? Then the second longest one we call this the fuller. Then we have our handles. Yeah. And the cutters is the smallest ones we hold in the hand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? So depending depend on where you hit, you get different pitches, right? Right? Whereas the bigger one, you might get different sounds. For the bigger ones, you more stomp to the ground. Yeah. To demonstrate. For the smaller ones, you put it in your hand and you play. Yeah, okay, right? okay, okay. Now, this was eventually banned uh, in the early 1900s um, by the authorities because they were much of the roads as indicated here. And, <laughs> they right? that. Yeah. yeah, all the portals and stuff there. Yeah, also, yeah. they used to use it as weapons as well. Okay. So to, to, to try to avoid all that, the tambang was banned. After that was banned, they were trying to find something else again to beat up. Because as trees, you know, we just we need to find something else, right? Yeah. So this is where metal trash cans, uh, basically tins was used. This is where the oh, pan oh. was really introduced now. Where yeah. they actually pick up trash cans and beat it with it, right? Yeah. Now, the difference between this and the first two instruments, the first two instruments, the drum and the tambang was more rhythm. Yeah. The pan men uh, followed that, but the trash cans, they actually found pitches. And this is oh. where they got the pan from, right? Yeah. So not only trash cans, they would they move on to the oil drums as well. Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. they sink it and they find some notes, it wasn't the perfect notes, but they got a tune out of it, and, it's, and that's where we get the steel band from. Okay, okay, right? okay. Now, this wasn't banned, but it wasn't really accepted um, because a lot of bad guns, quote unquote, uh, gangsters, or the lower class was involved with pan. And, uh, the police would run them, arrest them, throw away the pan, as indicated here as well. Yeah. Right? So this is the early police uniform with the short pants and the high boots, the white caps, right? And they are running all the pan men there. Yeah. Because yeah. they're disturbing the peace, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in this painting here, uh, shows the process of making a sweet pan. Right? So there are many steps. So, but the very first step is the sinking of the pan. Yeah. Right. So this is where the pan maker will take a flat face hammer and actually sink it. Yeah. Right. And well, depending on what pan you're making, uh, the more notes you have, the deeper you go. The less notes you have, the shallow you go. For example, we have a bass pan here. Because the bass pan only have three notes, it's more shallow. Okay. Yeah. Right. Where for a tenor pan, you might go deeper to cater for more notes. For more notes. Okay. Right? The second step is the marking and the grooves, making the grooves. And then the third step is the counter sinking. So this is where he he hammers around the notes. Yeah. So once he hammers around the note, the note will rise for itself. Okay. And that's where you get your pictures on. Yeah. You have cotton of the skirt. So on the side of the pan, we call it the skirt. So yeah. Because it looks like a skirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the higher the shorter the skirt, the higher the, the voice of the instrument. Oh. The longer the skirt, the lower the voice. Lower, so okay. for a bass, yeah. You know, yeah. Cut Keep the yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? And then we have the bone pit the fire and let it cool down, right? This is the holy pictures and so on. 
and then we have the fine tuning process where they use special hammers to actually get the perfect pitches. Yeah. As well. And then we go to the chroming process. Oh, okay. Right? May have a shiny look, protect the pan from rusting. Rusting, rusting like yeah. It. Right? And that's the process that we make it happen. All right. I'm just going to pause there so you just get a, a slight history of the soup pan and to see the full tour, you have to visit. And I'm just going to continue this epic tour. You learn a lot right now thanks to our host right at this point in time at the National Museum of Carnival right here on Charlotte Street, corner of Duke and Charlotte. Yeah. Now a special shout out to Mr. Joseph Charles, the artist for all the paintings highlighting the evolution of Pan at the museum, as well Mr. Dennis Fakery, who financed Mr. Charles' exhibit here. Now Christopher Recording Studio was where peeps used to go to record their music. <laughs> no relation with our tour guide Christopher here. Yeah. And these are some of the albums produced at the studio. And one more thing before we press. Because of this clash between Tokyo and Invaders. Invaders yeah. And other clashes as well. Other clashes. The government got, then got involved and put bands in Panya and uh, get sponsorship for them. And eventually tried to make some competitions just like Panama. And that's how Panama really came about. After avoid this, All this yeah. Yeah, conflict. Well, I just want to thank you know Christopher and the museum here. This was a real epic tour, especially history laden, especially with the pan. So I highly recommend you all, especially now during the carnival season, come and check out the carnival museum. Yeah, turn go vibes. So hope you enjoyed this one and bonus. Click on this video to see my walk to the museum. For those of you who, you know, made it to the end, enjoy. Yeah, well, click on the video first now and then, yeah, all right, it's